Well, hello everybody and welcome to my show. My name is Jason DaCosta and this is, wait wait for it, what's the name of this? I can't remember. Oh yeah, that's right. It's Consistent Preterism. How's everybody doing out there? It has been a while, to say the least. Um, I'm just cruising here. If you notice a little bit more of a wiggle, a wobble, a weeble wobble in the background, it's because I got a new work truck. It's a beautiful 06 Silverado and uh, she runs great. Um, you know, trying to find a, a used truck in this market is not the easiest of tasks because first of all, everything's way overpriced because of the shortage. And secondly, anybody who lists their used POS, um, they actually overprice it because they understand that the market is inflated. So uh, yeah, that wasn't an easy task, but I ended up lucking out and finding something and uh, it's coming quite handy, uh, handy dandy. Hope everybody's doing all right out there, especially you, Andy. Um, listen, it's been a while and I just wanted to jump on here and say hi to everybody. I've been getting emails. The comments on my YouTube channel have just been, you know, like one, one or two every day on all these videos and I just can't respond to them. I'm just uh, completely inundated with personal work and projects and you know we're getting heavy into the the real estate thing or heavier I should say um you know moving into the handful of properties range and it, it takes some time especially when you're pretty much the manager so um yeah I just don't have the time to answer everybody a uh, couple people even really really supported uh my hypothesis I guess you should say um and I wanted to respond, but I just didn't have the time. So uh, if you're listening to this, if you're new to the theory or the idea and you agree with it or you like some of the points in it and you've commented and I haven't responded, um, I do apologize. I just I just don't have the time right now. I Who knows? Maybe one day I can go back and read them uh, and respond to them. There have been some stupid ones indeed. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, you get the old keyboard... Uh, you know, defensive linebacker for uh, Christianity on there and they start arguing with you and um, it's just not not worth the time. But I wanted to just hop on, say hello, let everybody know that I'm still here. I'm still IO. Um, ah, God, I've heard some rumors. I know Mike Bradley is writing a book. Uh, I, I believe I actually wrote the foreword for that book. Um, I could be wrong. That could have been another life. I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, no, look out for Mike Bradley's book. And um, it's going to be a rather thick, uh, you know, demonstration of I.O. through a variety of different texts and perspectives and, um, you know, scenarios and proof texting, the whole nine, right? Uh, I believe Bradley even uses historical uh, evidence, outer biblical, um, to make the case. So those of you who know Mike Bradley, you know, he's, uh, he's not going to cut corners. I used to call him brass knuckle Bradley because by the time any of his debate opponents were done, they had looked like they had taken a lumping of all lumpings. Um, so brass knuckle Bradley kind of became his, uh, you know, legendary nickname. But uh, yeah, he's coming out with a book, so look for it. Once I know about it and know when it's released, hey, it may already be released, um, I will let you know. Or maybe he stopped writing it for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but I will have to check in with him on that. Um, let's talk briefly about Israel only, right? Because that's why we're all here. We're here to understand why a guy like myself, and many others, by the way, <clears throat> would think that the New Testament last days narrative, <laughs> when you say it like that, it's just kind of obvious, isn't it? The New Testament last days narrative, why that would be related to the promises of Israel and why that situation in a nutshell makes no sense to extend beyond what it was looking at and pointing towards. We see... I guess I'll just give a little recap, but we see boatloads of evidence 
okay, in the New Testament and in the Old. Um, you know, that's one thing. I love when people say, well, you got a lot of evidence from the New Testament, but uh, you're lacking in the Old Testament. Well, uh, excuse me, Fred Arbuckle, the Old Testament is chock full of evidence, okay? If you look at any of the prophets, I mean, just do a little eeny, meeny, miny, mosky and point to one and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, literally, every prophet speaks of Israel's restoration and regathering from every place under heaven. It speaks of the children of Israel coming back from all the lands that they were dispersed to and God would gather them and have mercy upon them and he would remember the covenant that he made with their father Abraham. This is the, the theme of pretty much all of the prophetic letters. And they all looked forward to a time in the future where this would come to fruition. Now, people are skeptics. They say, oh, none of that ever happened. Uh, this is all BS. That's fine, right? That's fine. Um, people say, oh, every bit of it happened. It's completely accurate to the core. That's fine, all right? That's your prerogative to believe that way. People say, well, it's all true, but it hasn't happened yet. In other words, we're futurists. We uh, look at it as true historical fact, and we're also waiting for something to occur in our future that will take us up to that great city in the sky. And that's okay. If that's your prerogative, that's, your, that's okay. You have the right to believe that. But personally, me, okay? See, I've come a long way. I, I, I want people to have their own opinion because I'm just done with, you know, bagging on people. I just, just believe whatever you want, but listen to the evidence at least. Give it a fair trial. What I'm saying is that we're looking at a last day's narrative in the New Testament, and the New Testament kind of throws it off because people say, hey, New Testament, New Covenant, right? That means new people. That means new thing. There's a new thing going on. But upon further investigation... And upon closer observation, one can see that the New Testament is not speaking of an ongoing, eternal, never-ending mission, okay? Although sometimes the wording that we read in our English versions, our New King James versions, sometimes it may make it seem as though there's a eternal, forever context. But we have to be intellectual when it comes to reading the story and look at the details and when we do we can see that it was actually a limited mission it was a mission for a certain group of individuals whom Jesus called the sheep or the elect to which he said he would not lose one but if you notice that mission has to come to completion very soon the time clock the shot clock if you will was running out there was only but a few seconds left in some of the letters to get that shot up. And that shot was the coming of Christ, right? And so the coming of Christ was the end-all be-all for these individual elect saints. This is when they would receive their immortal, glorified, heavenly bodies. This is when they would experience, those who were alive, that is, a light switch change to immortal, angelic bodies. They would be caught up into the clouds with the Lord, just like he was, he was the firstborn of the brethren. He was the first of the resurrection, said Paul. But they would be caught up together with the Lord in the air, in the clouds, to forever be with him. There would be no more pain, no more death, no more tears, no more sorrow. But they would forever be with the Lord in this place called New Jerusalem, which, by the way, only had the 12 tribes' names written on it. And which, by the way, Revelation 14 says that only the 12 tribes could sing of redemption and salvation in that new kingdom because these were the ones redeemed from the earth. So it seems to me, and, you know, trust me, when I get going into these rants, it seems as though I'm angry. I'm not angry. I'm just saying, like, people act as though, well, some people act as though the I.O. view has no merit. It's got no credit. It's not worthy, right? No, that's wrong. The I.O. view brings a punch with it that knocks out most opponents. But it takes a lot of unraveling and unwinding of all these, you know, concepts and theories and nonsense that we've been taught. And even the atheists, even the skeptics have a lot of nonsense that they need to unravel because they're a product of false Christianity as well. All right, think about it. The atheist, the skeptic, the, the Dr. Bob Price or the, um, well, what was that? Was that an animal back there? Shoot. <coughs> Excuse me. The, uh, the Bob Prices or the Richard Carriers, 
uh, the dick carriers, as I call them. Um, these fellas are the Bar Ehrmans, right? These fellas are what they are because mainly because of Christianity, because without Christianity, they probably wouldn't have taken a uh, liking into studying where this stuff came from and all the theories and blah, 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 endless conspiracies, blah, 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 right? They probably wouldn't. Let's face it. Christianity kind of put that on the map. Without Christianity, there really is no, you know, no, there's no letters. There's, there's nothing, right? So even them, they need unraveling and unwinding because their theories and their beliefs are built upon a faulty understanding of the scriptures. Okay, so with that said, I want to wrap up here. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, call some attention to that. Okay, so IO, well, let me let me make my main point here first. IO uses a host of texts, both New Testament and Old Testament texts to prove that there needs to be some serious unraveling of ideas and theories and thinking when it comes to especially the New Testament, but also the Old Testament. The Old Testament looks forward, folks, to a period in time where Israel would be regathered from her Gentile pagan state. Even Deuteronomy and Moses looked forward to to a time in the future where those who were uh, God's people, that being Israel, would be dispersed in nations and pagan and worshiping idols and the work of men's hands and, you know, carved stone and blah, blah, blah. But God would turn and have mercy and he would call them back and he would do so because he remembered, he was remembering the covenant promise that he made to their father, their loin father, okay, from the loins. One will come from your body, Okay. Now you can say, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Well, how does that work? Well, it doesn't matter. That's what the story says. And just so happened when Paul comes along in the end and he's writing to these ones in, that are living in Galatia, these descendants, and he says, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or, or Greek, Gentile, whatever. If you are Christ, it's because you're Abraham's seed. You're a descendant. You're an heir. Okay. If you are Christ, it's because you're Abraham's seed and an heir according to promise. Well, remember the promise back in Deuteronomy, Moses said it. He said it straight out. He said, they'll be in the nations. They'll be scattered. They'll be worshiping wood and stone. But God would have mercy upon them and remember the covenant that he made with their fathers. Okay, that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, hey, it doesn't matter where you are in life. If you're a, a Jew, if you're a Gentile, you've been gathered in. You've been marked out. You've been... You know, given the, the seal of the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, Revelation 7 says was only for the 12 tribes of Israel. If you've been given that, that means you're a descendant of Abraham and you're an heir according to the promise. And so that's what this is actually all about in its, you know, fantasy type of way. It's the 12 tribes of Israel, it's the chosen ones coming back, being regathered. And it may not have even, you know, been based on anything. It might have just been a somebody's attempt at fulfilling the Old Testament promises. Somebody's creation, if you will, at fulfilling the Old Testament promises. Right? Imagine somebody in the first, second, third century, whatever it may be, a Greek-speaking uh, Jew or whoever it might have been, or a number of different people, imagine them reading the Old Testament, knowing the promises that are back there about the 12 tribes being regathered from all over the nation. And imagine them actually putting a pen to paper or a, whatever the hell they used to write back then, to papyrus. Imagine them putting the pen to paper and actually writing out a story that fulfills those Old Testament texts. I mean, it's not that hard to imagine. It's not that hard to, to say, hey, somebody actually read the Old Testament, knew the promises of the 12 tribes, and wrote a story, or people wrote a story to fulfill that. So anyways, that's where I'm going to leave it, folks. I wanted to just check in with you, say hello, let you know I'm still alive, throw a few questions at me. I'll see if I can get to them on this one. Um, it's, I'm not going to go back and look at all the old ones right yet, but if you posted a question or if you emailed me, 
and it's something simple and not a long drawn out, you know, jibber jabber, uh, leave a comment and I will try to get back to you. Otherwise, folks, I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to give the video a like. It helps out and we'll catch you on that flip side. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.